take a country to war, to make up things, to take people to war. It's just got to be the most obscene, immoral thing um, to do. So this government hasn't earned the right to be trusted if it says Assad has chemical weapons or if it says Ahmadinejad has a, a nuclear weapon. Um, but it's not this government, is it, that went to war with Saddam? You have to, you have to differentiate. What, what, which government? You're talking about Obama versus Bush? Yes. No, 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 I'm talking about the real government. Wall Street, the banks, the corporations, the people that made $2. trillion that we spent on the Iraq war. Who made that money? Soldiers in the field? I don't think so. No, no, this is always about the people who have the purse strings and the politicians who are bought off by them. is building a bomb, really? Well, I'll believe it, you know, when he walks in the room here with it and shows it to me. Frankly, I mean, that's really, that's just how much I would not trust anything being said by the military industrial complex of this great country. Right from the beginning, it was very clear that there was no legitimate reason to go into Iraq. The only compelling reason would be to try to uh, help corner the market on oil. It didn't work out that way for those who thought that it would. But the fact of the matter is oil was uh, so uh, well-known as to be a motivating factor that when I ran for president in 2004 going across the country, I'd ask audiences, tell me what this is about, this war is about, in three letters. And thousands of people would respond simultaneously, oil. It was, it's not a, it was never a secret. Right. In 2007, uh, Congressman, you actually introduced articles of impeachment against George Bush and Dick Cheney. When you look at things like Nixon being ousted for wiretapping, Clinton being ousted for an affair, how is it that these two men could not be held accountable for initiating an illegal war based on known lies? Well, I think we have to place the responsibility for that on the shoulders of Democratic leadership because we could have moved forward with an impeachment, but the Democratic leadership wouldn't do it. Now, there has to be accountability in a democracy. It is widely understood today that war was based on lies. So then, should not, since the catastrophe of the war resulted in thousands of Americans being killed, tens of thousands injured, maybe a million innocent Iraqis, uh, died, perhaps uh, damaged uh, in the hundreds of billions of dollars to Iraq, shouldn't there be some accountability? And so what I call for is a process of truth and reconciliation like South Africa had many years ago, where leaders are required to come forward and state their role in the decision-making process, and if they lie, uh, then they're subject to perjury charges. We need to clear the air in America. We, we need the truth. And, and it is every, since everyone knows it was based on a lie, then what's wrong with calling those who lie to us forward to not only require explanation, but to clear the air. Absolutely, I heard Pelosi at the time saying impeachment was off the table. I mean, could it be that the Democratic leadership was scared that they would open their can of worms and somehow be complicit in the lies? Well, the, you know, one third of the, uh, two thirds of the Democrats voted against going to war. But the third that did vote for it were involved, as were their counterparts in the Senate, in establishment type politics that favored war. Some of the leading senators who have become, you know, exalted public figures took a stand for that war. And they've never been held accountable, in, even politically. In, interestingly enough, it, it would seem as though to be qualified to speak on foreign policy, even still today, that you have to have been for the war even though it was based on lies. That's the kind of upside down thinking that continues to guide foreign policy decisions in Washington, D.C.